Hello, it is Friday, February 23rd, 2024. I'm Chris Raymond. Welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Friday crossword today, which means we'll be solving a themeless crossword that might be on the tricky side, but I did just pop into the Daily Solve Discord chat server and I saw a comment that this was actually perhaps gentler than yesterday's crossword. So this uh, potentially relatively gentle Friday puzzle has been brought to us by Aaron Spiller, Lake House Bros, Adam and Annette Noble, and as always, the indomitable Shoalmaster. So thank you so much to the four of them. They're benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, which means they support this channel. They sustain this series day in, day out with their generous contributions. I'm very grateful to them for that. And if you'd like to support the channel similarly, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve or click the description field link. And there you'll find the bonus videos, including this month's monthly bonus puzzle from the New York Times, which is constructed by another new constructor, well, sort of a new constructor. It's Joel Faliano, who uh, constructed, who constructs the mini crossword each day. And this month's is called All About Rom-Coms, and it's completely themed around romantic comedies. And I <laughs> discovered, wow, I've not seen very many of these, as it turned out, but it didn't, uh, it fortunately wasn't too much of a hindrance in solving the puzzle. So anyway, yet another sort of new style of monthly bonus puzzle from the New York Times, and that's on the Patreon channel. There's also the official mug for benefactors. Thanks to everybody who backs the channel through Patreon at any level. And um, there's also the Daily Solve Discord chat server, which I mentioned earlier. People discuss these puzzles, these videos, other puzzles. And um, you can join that from the description field. And finally, uh, it's a big help if you subscribe to the channel on YouTube, if you like the videos, if you comment on them from time to time. Those things all do help out. All right, let's get on to the puzzle. This is a debut Friday construction by Larry Snyder. So welcome to him for his first New York Times crossword. And it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. It's Friday. There's no theme. Let's start solving. Formal affirmative. Formal of affirm affirmative. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, something like that. Home of the prehistoric Jantija temples. Wow, okay. I don't know how to pronounce that word. I'll have to look this up. That's... It's interesting and enticing, whatever it is. I'll have to I'll have to find out. Absolute drivel is tripe or rot or nonsense. Nonsense would fit. Let's just try it and see if it if it works. State flower of New Mexico. Don't know. Early number. Early number. Could be something like 6 a.m. or something like that. I don't know. Device used by a court reporter informally. Okay. Well, I think nonsense is, is nonsense because this one I'm fairly confident about, a steno. Um, I don't know what the actual official name of this is, but it's stenography machine. It's a particular way of, um, of typing, essentially, of recording um, information through some kind of sort of shorthand system. Um, that was a horrible explanation, but you can look it up, I guess. Uh, let's see. Queer identity whose flag is green, white, gray, and black for short. Um, well, uh, I don't know the colors, but just based on this O, I'm wondering if it's a, oops, a romantic. Let's just try that and see if I can confirm or deny anything on the crosses. State flower of New Mexico. I keep thinking Dahlia, but that's the flower associated with Mexico, not New Mexico. And it wouldn't fit anyway. It just ends with an A. Um, early number. Well, if this is right, then it wouldn't be anything AM. It wouldn't be a time. Early number. What is that getting at? Early number. Sorry, I just feel, this is, this is one I, I just want to puzzle out. Word with swim or swap, swim meat or swap meat. Anyway, I guess I don't, I guess I'm not going to figure it out too down. Blank Nova. Um, supernova, bossa nova. Um, I don't know how oh, I can't think. Oh, this is, this is going to be yes. Formal affirmative. Yes, ma'am. I think that's going to be. So does that help with this state flower of New Mexico? Oh, yucca. That's yeah. Cactuses flower. So the yucca flower from the, that, that's gotta be right. And that would make sense given the, the, um, sort of ecology of New Mexico. Okay, so early number, I still don't know. Absolute drivel. Oh, it's utter rot, maybe? That was utter rot. It was absolute drivel. It was total nonsense. Queso, e.g. Is it cheese? 
Um, dip. Yeah, there we go. That's what we want. And then early number, ether? Or, oh, number. <laughs> yes, okay, I was completely misdirected by this. I should have thought more about the question mark indicating a pun. So it is something that numbs you. You know, you always hear in, in surgery in the 19th century or whatever, people are, um, you know, they're, they're put out, they're numbed, they're put out with ether. Okay. So one in a hundred is a cent, uh, as in a hundred dollars or, uh, sorry, hundred cents in a dollar or hundred cents in a euro. And question asked outside a bedroom, are you awake? I'm sure that is the answer. No, it's not. Are you up yet? Still doesn't fit actually either. No, I really, really thought that would be it. Are you ready? <laughs> Everything is one, one letter shy. Oh, that's funny. Whoops, e.g. yells. So this is whoop to yell. Okay, because I really do want this to be are you something. But are you still up? Nope, that's one letter too long. Are you asleep? I mean, it's kind of the least useful question because obviously they wouldn't be able to answer it if so, but I guess they could say no. So it's the same idea. Let's see if this works. Sonnets to Orpheus, poet. Oh, I don't know off the top of my head. Hmm. What about this? I just want to see if you are, are you asleep is correct. Singer Marie. Ta there's a, is there Donna Marie? Oh, I think I'm on the right track with that, but I can't remember exactly her name. I don't know if this is right. I haven't been able to confirm or deny it, but are you is probably right. Tin Lizzie's. Oh, those are model. If that was the name for the Model T Ford car, the Tin Lizzy. And Banyo feature. Uh, uh, Banyo feature would be what? The Banyo is a bathroom, right? Um, oh, but, but I don't think that matters because I think we're just referring, I should look it over here. We're looking at the diacritical mark over the N, the tilde. There we go. So it's just a feature of the word banyo. Okay, there we go. So then what about this? Wrote an expose, say. Told all, told all, you exposed everything in an expose. You know, whistleblower. Identify is to place, you place someone, you identify them. And the occasion when one might choose truth. I don't know, is it sort of in the game truth or dare, a sleepover? No, I'm just trying to, that's the kind of game you can play to sleepover. I'm reaching there probably. Greenish drink. Uh, absinthe or greenish drink. Um, Pernod, which is a, uh, what is that category of drink? Oh, that's infuriating. Well, it probably doesn't start with an L anyway. Uh, what is a greenish drink? Limeade? There we go. That's probably right. I guess I guess it's green. I guess it's not strongly green. It's not like a sort of chemical green. I mean, I know everything is a chemical, but anyway. Um, it has high-end tastes. It has high-end tastes. Flute, shoot... Uh, I'm not sure. One of more than 300 for SNL. Emmys? Or Emmy... Emmy nod or nom for nomination? Nod, probably. What about 12 down? So-called. Yeah, it probably ends with a D. Okay, I think that's probably right. One of more than 300 for SNL. It must have had 300 Emmy nominations over the course of its run or no nominations, often called nods. Occasion when, when one might choose truth. Slam poetry something? Uh, I don't know. I don't, think I'm, I don't think I'm on the right track with that. Matches as watches. You could synchronize your watch with someone else. I mean, I am wearing a mechanical watch, so I guess this would apply to me, but in many cases it doesn't because often if you're wearing... As, you know, if you're wearing, I don't know, a smartwatch or something, I guess it would be it would presumably be automatically synchronized via the internet. Uh, all right, predispositions are what? Bents. You have a particular bent 
oops, towards a, uh, towards a, um, a tendency or something, a predisposition, a bent. Okay, so what is this? Occasion when one might choose truth. Slow, oh, me, oh. Oh, I think it is. It is actually the thing I was thinking with sleepover. Oh, that's amazing. But it's a slumber party, which is what you could call a sleepover. Uh, there you go. So it is, I was on the right track in terms of thinking about playing the game truth or dare, and you might choose truth. Wow. Okay. I'm shocked that worked. Uh, it has, I wish I just wish I would have jumped to that sooner. It has high end tastes. Oh, oat cuisine. There we go. So, you know, oat for high in French. So high end cooking it has uh, high end tastes. Okay. Um, presumably things like caviar and truffles and so on. Question asked outside a bedroom. Okay, that's the same. Swimsuit portmanteau. Oh, tankini? Yeah, I've seen that before. Portmanteau of tank top and bikini, I suppose. Okay. Um, isn't finalized. If something isn't finalized, it's still sort of hanging. It's still pending. It pens. Are you dressed? Again, that's still... <laughs> One letter off. I, it's amazing how many different possibilities I've considered here that are all one letter too short or too long without ever landing on one that fits. Question outside a bedroom. Are you decent? There we go. That's the same idea as are you dressed, but asked in a more euphemistic way, I suppose. Okay. And then sonnets to, oh, is it Blake? Sonnets to Orpheus, poet. Uh, let's see. Is anybody home? I don't know. Maybe it's not. That doesn't look didn't didn't look very convincing here. With is anybody home? Can I think of anything independently of this? Is anybody? Oh, hello. I guess it could be just hello. Ah, right. Okay. Fair enough. So, instrument that includes ranks and divisions. A pipe organ. There we go. So, uh, this is this is referring to the sort of different. Um, well, I guess different octaves and sounds that uh, that an organ, a pipe organ can make. Um, something unoriginal, a replica. There we go. And then, you know, duplicate. One who grapples in dialect, a, a wrestler <laughs> in dialect. So there we go. So in, in certain, you know, in certain, I guess, dialects of, of English, I presume specifically American English, you might refer to wrestling as wrestling in this manner. Okay, had to recant, had to recant eight one's words. There we go. So you had to retract a statement or apologize or something. And then sign of a sellout. I mean, this is, this is something I used to associate with the crossword all the time years ago. I don't recall seeing it as much recently, but SRO for standing room only. Um, which presumably is the kind of thing that you used to see outside of Broadway shows and things. Um, I don't feel as though you often see tickets still sold as standing room only. I guess you do at music, in, in certain music venues, I guess. Yeah, maybe, maybe that's what it's primarily referring to. Anyway, there we go. SRO, standing room only. Uh can also be single room occup occupancy, but not in this case. Get back, retreat, there we go. Oh, Rilke, uh, Rainer Marie Rilke, I guess that is. Okay, I don't think I'm familiar with the sonnets to Orpheus, so shame on me. But anyway, to get back is to, oh no, it isn't retreat. Okay, but it, nonetheless, even though I guess that's wrong, um, it, I think Rilke is correct, so I'm going to leave that. Dear blank, dear sirs, I guess you could say if you're writing a formal letter. So there's another bit of formality with, to go along with our yes ma'am up there. Um, although what is this then? Get back. Retread, re... I don't know. Maybe I'll get rid of this actually. Team. Aside, as in in a match. For real, legit, legitimate, it's real. Beethoven's fourth question mark. I think it's just the letter T. I don't think it means Beethoven's fourth symphony in this case. Uh, it just means the fourth letter of the name Beethoven, which is a T. 
Okay, outmaneuver in a way to evade. So what, oh, oh, retrieve, I see. So, I, okay, so it's being used as a transitive verb, I guess, in this case. So you're going to get something back. You're going to retrieve it as opposed to you yourself are going to sort of get yourself back, to move back physically. Okay, so here we have Fleming, who is the first opera singer to perform the national anthem at the Super Bowl in 2014, Renee Fleming. There we go, okay. And I certainly heard of Renee Fleming. I don't think I knew this fact about the Super Bowl, but there we have it. Okay, what you might get at the gym. You might get in shape. And a borrower's limit is a loan cap, maybe? I think that's probably right. To drain away chemicals or something that might be to leach them. Oh, Tina Marie. Tina Marie, that, that's probably who I was thinking of when I said, what did I say, Donna Marie or something, maybe? There we go. Tina Marie, I've certainly heard of. Okay, great. So, Tukas's, there we go. Is that, is that Yiddish? I don't know. Uh, but anyway, asses would be rear ends is what we're looking for. Stealing from the collection plate, for example, would be a secret something, a, a, a sac... Why do I not see what that is? Sorry. Major export of Ukraine, wheat. It's the sort of breadbasket of, of Europe, as it's often called. Um, what is this? Stealing from the collection plate is... This feels like it's it's blindingly obvious and I just can't think of the word. What about this? Covered in ink. You could be tattooed if you're... Oh, no. Oh, no, we need two, two O's. There we go, tattooed. It does fit. And then they resemble boas, so pythons, another kind of snake. There we go. Ignatius Blank, figure on Netflix's Wednesday. Okay, I have not seen Wednesday, but I do know it's about a character from the Adams family. And there is a ca character on the Adams family called, is it Cousin It? So perhaps that's who this is or related to that person. But there we go. I think that's the answer. Um, Ugh. Poo or boo or something? No, that doesn't look good here, does it? Uh-oh? No. Liturgical chant. A liturgical chant is a what? Can't think. Kicked off. Oh, this corner is really tripping me up. Flight components are... <laughs> I don't know any of these things. Network for 15 Across. 15 Across says, longtime TV news colleague of Pelly Cooper and Whitaker. Do not recognize it. Singer Michaels. Oh, this feels like it should be blindingly obvious as well. Um, singer Michaels. I'm sure this will be obvious, but I don't know. Stealing from the collection plate, for example, is... I keep th just thinking of words like sacrifice and things, but that's obviously wrong. What sacrilege. It's sacrilegious. That is the word. That is the word I kept trying to think of, and it just would not come out of my brain. There we go. So, ug is blah. Oh, maybe this isn't tattooed. Is it tatted up, maybe? Oh, could be. Could be. If you're tatted up, you're, you're tattooed. You're covered in ink. So then, ug could be blah, then. Not blah. And then, liturgical chant is a credo? Then so you chant the credo, the kind of tenets of your faith, maybe? And then kicked off, it's begun. Okay, good. Wow, that sacrilege and tatted up really gave me what I needed. Especially tatted up because I had the wrong thing in there misleading me. Flight components are steps, as in steps of a, a, a flight of stairs, a staircase. And that same kind of slight misdirection was in the puzzle the other day as well. So network for those people must be CBS, which is one of the major U.S television networks. And then Brett Michaels. There we go. And then, yes, steps. We got that. Okay, good. Finally. So-called, so I uh, don't know, and defunct health technology company that once had a $10 billion valuation. Oh, this will be the, the one from, what was her name? Elizabeth? I, d I don't remember, but the company was Theranos, which claimed to be able to test blood sort of almost instantly from a tiny little pinprick. Uh, for diseases and things. Elizabeth Holmes was her name. Okay, home of the prehistoric temples, not sure. Longtime TV news colleague, not sure about that either. 
prestigious award established after its founder purportedly read his premature obituary. Oh, that's funny. I don't know. Uh, Nobel? I don't... AOL... Oh, maybe it is Nobel. Oh, that's interesting. What a weird fact, if, if that's what it is. Um, because AOL competitor could be MSN, the Microsoft network. Um, sort of early internet companies. And then... Malta? Maybe. On. Oh, yeah. Something's on something. It's atop it. I think this is Malta. I'm going to have to look this up and see what these temples are. Okay. So, windy location of myth. A labyrinth. There we go. From, from Greek myth. Oh, but it's not windy. It's windy. There we go. Because it winds around, you know, the, the Minotaur's labyrinth. Okay. Oh, Stahl. Leslie Stahl. Oh, are these 60 Minutes journalists? So then here we have so-called alleged, as in something was claimed to be the case, so-called alleged. Oh, and this was Nobel. I'm really interested about this history. I'm amazed I haven't heard of that before. Uh, whence the phoenix? So whence, you know, from where did the phoenix arise from the pyre? The phoenix rose from the flames. And then so-called is alleged, which we said, and then an unreliable news source could be a rag, you know, newspaper that prints scurrilous claims. So that's it. <laughs> I don't know that I necessarily did find this <laughs> easier than yesterday. Um, did I? Now I can't remember. I don't know. It might have been similar for me. Um, and I, I didn't help myself by writing tattooed rather than tatted up, which uh, really caused me even more difficulty down in that corner than I might have otherwise had. Uh, but there we have it. That was a Friday crossword. I mean, certainly not a brutally difficult a Friday, but maybe less of a of a total cakewalk than I, than I perhaps had expected. Uh, but that was only my fault for not managing my own expectations properly. And there we go. We're back to, I know I was going to say we're back to a normal grid pattern, but that, but the thing I was thinking of by contrast was the February bonus puzzle that I, that I solved on the Patreon channel, which was the most recent crossword I solved before this one, which had an incredibly weird and non-symmetrical grid. And if anyone knows what it was supposed to represent, do let me know because I found it baffling. Anyway, that's utterly unrelated to this. Um, this was a Friday crossword with a completely symmetric, rotationally symmetrical grid. So there we go. Nothing strange about that. And a nice debut from Larry Snyder. So uh, well done to him. And, uh, and that's that for the Friday puzzle. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back tomorrow for a Saturday crossword, another themeless puzzle, possibly the trickiest uh, crossword of the week. We'll have to come back and find out. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Friday. Take care. <music>